Ithaca College is set in the rolling hills of upstate New York. We're a residential campus setting, a four-year college. We have four professional schools and one liberal studies school, the School of Humanities and Sciences, and that's where the Department of Physics is located. The department was founded in 1965 by one faculty member at first, and then it grew to about six during the 70s and 80s, and we're up to eight full-time physics professors now. This is a field that's usually dominated by men, physics and engineering. So we're very fortunate to have two women on the faculty here. Uh, we have a strong focus on our students, and we're really looking at our curriculum on a regular basis, and we're using the results from astronomy and physics education research to use best practices in our curriculum. We have an active physics education research program. Two of our faculty, that's their main focus. We have moved all of our introductory courses for both majors and non-majors into a room we call the Performance-Based Physics Laboratory. So this is very unusual. You don't find this at very many colleges. Intra-level courses tend to be very hands-on and the students really get to dig in to how physics is done. It's not an observational science for them, it's a participation science. The thing that makes our department stand out is that we're a smaller school, so you get more individualized attention, but yet we're doing some really great research and there are no graduate students in physics, so the undergraduates aren't competing for research spots. So I have two areas of research. Archaeogeophysics is where I use things like ground penetrating radar, magnetometry, conductivity, resistivity to look into the ground without excavating and get images of buried archaeological features. So I've been working in Cyprus with some collaborators from Cornell University and we're looking at a late Bronze Age city, so about a 3,000 year old city. Over the course of the, the several years I've been working on the Cyprus project, I've had nine different students participate. I signed on to be part of his archaeogeophysics team, so this summer I got to go to Cyprus with him and two other students. And what our role was that we went in using magnetometry and GPR, ground penetrating radar, and we would survey the sites before the excavation team got there to see if there was anything worth digging up. It was a fantastic opportunity. I don't think I could have asked for better circumstances. I have two main interests. One is the formation of planetary systems, so uh, solar systems other than our own. And uh, I'm an observational astronomer, so I... And then my other side of research is, is uh, instrumentation engineering, and I'm on a team who's just built a camera that's on an airborne telescope. I'll be actually going on flights this spring with students for the first time. They've helped um, write software that we use in, in flight to analyze the data in real time. My own research is in the study of asteroids and meteorites. And in particular, I'm interested in what meteorites can tell us about the solar system and the earliest days of the solar system in the formation time. I'm working on a NASA project called OSIRIS-REx, and in 2016 we'll launch a spacecraft to an asteroid. We'll arrive in 2018 and we'll bring back a sample from a primitive carbonaceous asteroid by 2023. Uh, my area of research specialty is making cold atoms and in photonics, optical systems. Presently, I have uh, five students working on the project, uh, each uh, according to their uh, level of, uh, of expertise. So I'm a biophysicist. Uh, I work with fluorescence microscopy uh, and a specific technique called fluorescence uh, photoactivation localization microscopy. It's a bit of a mouthful, uh, but basically it's a technique that's used to study biological dynamics. I would say that my favorite thing about teaching is interacting with the students. I really enjoy creating a rapport. I really enjoy a lot of these new pedagogical techniques that have us interacting with the students one-on-one -on -one in the classroom, working on exercises rather than just standing up at the board. So I get to know my students, I get to know their strengths and weaknesses, and I get to support them in the meaningful ways that they need uh, each and every day. I'm the department's sole condensed matter physicist slash materials scientist. So uh, I, my research focuses on solids and how electrons behave in solids and crystal structures and how to make them and how they behave, and in particular under low temperatures. Students have taken skills that they've learned in my lab uh, and gotten jobs right out of college. They've taken skills that they've learned in my lab and used that to uh, get them into 
very good graduate schools. So in that sense, uh, the research that we do has very, very great real-world applications for our students. We are really proud of our students once they leave. We've got folks in engineering firms, uh, graduate programs, a couple of professors already have been around long enough for that. Um, and uh, also high school physics teachers who are doing really well. We're committed to teaching and learning in a collaborative environment. And we want the subjects that we teach our students to really matter, to help them to go out and solve uh, the world's problems and to give them the tools and the knowledge they need to make the world a better place.